Governor Kasich, thank you so much for joining us today in this ASP chat. My pleasure. It's always fun. Governor, before you served two terms as the governor of Ohio, you served in Congress and were the ranking member and the chair of the House Budget Committee from 1983 until you left Congress in 2001. So with that in mind, we're going to focus today on the federal budget and the debt ceiling debate that is currently happening in Congress. Over the last few weeks, Congress has been working on a long-term debt limit increase after it was temporarily extended in October. So simply put, what is the debt limit and what is the per- what purpose does it serve? Well, look, I mean, you have to think about government just like you think of a person. You can't keep not paying your bills. When you don't have enough money, you borrow. And then when, you know, the borrowing costs to get so get so high, then you have a problem. So the, the purpose of the debt limit, the debate is to, to put a stop to things and then to have the people in charge of the policy to think about, okay, what are our priorities? So let's just think about the debt. Who Who is it that's involved with the debt? Okay, well, you and I, we buy a treasury bond. We are an owner in part of what the government does. Foreign nations, you know, foreign investors, institutional investors, they buy the government bonds. They expect to get to get paid. They expect to be able to uh, to have their bond, uh, you know, honored. And the government then, you know, at, at this point, as they bring the debt higher and higher, they owe a lot of money. And at some point, investors may say, I'm not sure I'm going to get paid back because that's, that's what we have to worry about. At some point, investors say, no, no, or you've got to you've got to give me a better interest rate in order. You've got to pay me more money in order to have my money because I'm starting to worry about the risk. So this debt doesn't like go away. It's something that has to be honored. And as the debt goes higher and higher, the next generation is going to have to pay it off. I, I think the number is correct, but I think interest, paying interest on the national debt, I think is the third largest expenditure of the federal government. And when you're paying interest on the debt, that means you're not investing in schools, you're not investing in health. And we tend to think, well, the government can just ignore this. No, they can't because we are the ones that owe that own the debt and we expect to be paid back. And if we don't get it paid back, Think about the calamity it would cause in this country if all of a sudden we, we didn't pay our bills. And then if we didn't pay our bills and we couldn't borrow anymore, then how do you finance Social Security? How do you finance Medicare? It's a serious, serious issue. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen predicted the government would default on its debt if Congress didn't address the debt limit by December 15th. What would it mean for the United States to default on its debt and what would be the immediate repercussions? Well, it would shake everybody. It would shake investors if we defaulted. And I've never really felt that we were going to get to the point where we were going to default. I figured that as insane as things are in Disneyland North, otherwise known as Washington, D.C., uh, you know, I, I always felt it, that people would come to their senses and make sure they could work this out. <clears throat> but using the debt as a pressure point for both parties to try to negotiate the right level of spending, to me, is really, really important. Now, remember, Janet Yellen, I don't really know her. She seems to be a fine person, but she's a political operative, too. And so she puts out warnings. She also told us that there wasn't going to be inflation. So, you know, we'll take that to the bank and see how it works. But, you know, that's what they do. We've never, def- some people say we may have defaulted at a time, but I don't, I don't believe that. I think that we've been paying our bills. I was chairman of the budget committee for, I don't know, six or eight years when we balanced the budget. And the reason why I did it is because I felt that we should not pass debt onto future generations. And that if we could control the debt and control our spending, it would lead to more economic growth, more jobs, more prosperity. And so I'd spent 10 years of my life trying to get the budget balanced, not because of numbers, but because of greater issue. And we actually got it done. And we we not only balanced the budget, but we ran surpluses. So here's the interesting thing. When you run a surplus, you know, when you when you pay off the debt that you owe to people or, country, you know, people overseas or nations, whatever, then you don't have to borrow more money to pay it. It's called a rollover, right? But if you run a surplus, if you have more money, you can pay the debt and you don't have to go and issue more debt to cover the debt that you just paid off. Uh, and so we were we actually paid down the largest amount of the publicly held debt in modern history. 
and ran surpluses for like three or four years. This seems like this is not possible. It sounds like it's a movie, but we actually did it. And we did it with the administration and it was fantastic. Earlier this year, some Democrats in Congress proposed legislation that would allow the debt limit to be determined by the Secretary of Treasury instead of Congress. Should Congress cede that power to the executive branch? What are the what are the pros and cons of that? Well, Chris, you want to trust the government with our money? <clears throat> I mean, Paul, you want to trust the, the federal government and not the, the people that represent the people? Mm -hmm. I mean, in other words, if you take it away from the Congress and you put it in the executive branch, then you get decisions that favor the executive branch, right? I mean, would you like Donald Trump's uh, Secretary of Treasury to determine this? I mean, I don't think you do. So, and and I mean, and people today would not want John, Ye Janet Yellen to do. And so when it's in the hands of the Congress, it forces you to hash things out. As we've seen, we've been hashing this out for a long time. And um, I think it's a good thing myself because Without that, without, it's why you're doing, you're asking questions about this because you've heard so much about it. You're trying to get to understand why it matters. And so if all of a sudden it's just so like a blink of an eye and you just keep raising the debt limit or raising it higher and higher without discussions, then there's not the circuit break that forces decision makers to be in a position to try to, to sort out what spending is right and what is not, and how do we privatize, and what do we, you know, all those kinds of things. Governor, when you were in Congress, you advocated for a balanced budget amendment. 15 states have now passed legislation that would force a constitutional convention to consider a balanced budget amendment. So do you still think that such an amendment is a good idea? And would it really help resolve the sort of fiscal fights we keep seeing in Congress? Well, yeah, 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 that's, I traveled all over the country and we were getting very close to having enough states to call for a convention. And um, so there were people who were liberal that didn't want it. And believe it or not, there were many conservatives that didn't want it because they feared a constitutional convention would, if we had a convention, even though it was limited to one subject, which was the budget, well, it would get out of control and all these, all these crazy things were gonna happen, which I never bought. Um, so we just never got enough states. But what it would have done is to say, you have to have a balanced budget. You don't do it overnight. You do it over a period of time. You would create complete chaos if you said tomorrow you got to balance any more than if you had personal debt from bringing up credit cards or your mortgage, every mortgage or whatever. Everybody called you. You, you wouldn't have enough to, to be able to meet it. But you would do it over time. And then what you would do is to have have exclusions for crises, time of war, time of of recession, serious recession, you could structure it that way. <clears throat> and it would force the Congress to do what states do. You know, when I was governor, I had a balance of budget. I had no choice. Right now in Washington, there is no reason. So one of my daughters said, well, dad, why don't they become more responsible and, and, and not let this debt get up so high that maybe at some point we can't afford to pay it and things get crazy? I said, well, because politicians love to spend. It's listen, when you're in office and somebody asked you for a for some program in Boston and you say no, what do you what do you think the people that ask you think of you? So you really want to be reelected. So you keep telling people, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you make people happy when you spend money. But, you know, who's paying for it? It's not free money. The money doesn't grow on trees. Somebody's got to pay for that stuff. And so uh, either through higher taxes or more debt. And, you know, and by the way, when you ring up debt, it is a claim on future taxes, on future earnings, because it has to be paid. <clears throat> now, when I told my daughter that part of the taxes that she currently pays when she works is to pay the interest on the debt, she doesn't like that. But she didn't know that before. Well, from a young person's perspective, why does U.S. spending and, and the debt matter, right? Why should young people care? Because they're going to end up paying the bills. They're going to get stuck with these bills because this debt has to be paid. If I own a government bond, I expect to be paid when that bond expires. I'm going to get an interest payment for the fact that I lent the government my money. And at some point, I'm, I got to get paid off for the money I gave them. And so how does that get paid? It gets paid through the, through the collections that the government has which could result in and does result in higher taxes. It has to be paid. You can't, 
just tell people, oh, you have a bond, but we're not going to honor it. Could you imagine that if all of a sudden you gave some of your money to buy a government bond and the government showed up and said, we're not paying you? I mean, think what would happen. Think what you would think. So this is not some like, you know, big economic argument. Now, there was a theory out there called the, I think it's called the modern, I don't know, modern economic or monetary theory that said you can just keep spending as much as you want and there's no downside. I mean, that's just pure nonsense. And we're seeing it now because of the inflation we're now beginning to see in our country. And now we're going to end up seeing higher interest rates. So you talked earlier about where the power and responsibility should lie in terms of spending and debt, whether it's executive branch, Congress, state level. Recently, President Biden signed an executive order that would utilize hundreds of billions of dollars in federal money to make the government carbon neutral by 2050. If the Congress has the power of the purse, what power does the president have to direct that federal spending authorized by Congress? Uh, you know, it's, it's hard for me to answer because an executive order, I used to issue executive orders as governor. I, I liked executive orders. I don't, you know, if the legislature didn't want to do something, but there are limits to, to the executive order. Look, the normal process is you go through the House and the Senate, you set your priorities, you set your spending levels, and to have executives be able to force you to spend money. I don't like that idea. I think the process of House and Senate working it out, sending it to the president, the president either either likes the spending or doesn't, or that's the process, not, not through executive orders. Well, last question. You've been involved in several debt negotiations. What advice do you have for today's Congress when it comes to finding a way forward together on the debt limit and other, other fiscal spending issues? Well, Chris, how about... How about working together on all things? What we have now is a system in Washington where if you're an extremist, you get attention. You get attention and you raise more money because people now know your name. And it is like, it's like a meltdown. I, if I, you know, if I happen to be a reasonable, moderate person, no one ever knows who I am. But if I'm somebody who's, you know, on either the right or the left, that's extreme, then I have an ability to raise more money and I get to be more well known. The reason why somebody, and I think the reason why you're, you've done this, uh, uh, you know, the way in which you cover different uh, events <clears throat> is because you're concerned about the country. Okay. I mean, you guys are in the entertainment business, but you realize that public service matters. When people get elected, their job should be to forget all the politics. Their job should be look at a problem, try to fix it, try to help people to have a better life. And if all you're doing is worrying about yourself, raising money, getting reelected, you lose the, the, the sense of why you're there. And I think it's, it's just very difficult. Uh, and our leaders are letting us down because they're not demanding right now the best for what's in the, what's in the best interest of the country. There's too much politics. And so not only on fiscal matters, but you know, the debt limit and all those things, they force the parties to work together. Um, but it's a problem in everything. We're, we're just having such difficulty coming together because frankly, if one side works with the other, then, then their base says, well, we don't like that. We don't like you working together. How dare you? There was just a, a poll that was taken on college campuses where they asked Democrat you know, students who were Democrats and Republicans you know, as students who are Republicans, would you date somebody in the other party? You wouldn't believe how many people say no. I mean, what? that's not the way this country is supposed to work. We're supposed to have our own particular opinions and respect one another and, and put the good of the, of, we need to live a life a little bigger than ourselves. And we have people leaving, leading a smaller life, not a bigger life. And that's, uh, that's kind of the answer. So, but we'll get there and things like this, shows like this are going to help people to maybe tell their, tell the person, the, the people that represent them to get their act together and stop this. But it's great that you guys are doing this. And I, I love participating and being able to talk because this is for, there's so many people that will see this and come to understand that when government spends, it has a, it has a significant impact on our lives. And it doesn't mean that you don't spend. It means you have your priorities. And in government, it, there's so much waste. 
There's so much, so many things that can be done better. This is the 21st century. Why don't we get the politicians to act like it's 21st century and figure out ways to do things that are, uh, you know, that are maybe more, more privatized things that consolidate programs that don't make sense. It's possible to balance budgets and have a strong economy without having to hurt people. But you just have to have the guts to stand up and do the right thing. And if you don't get reelected, so what? Life in many ways is a lot better on the outside <laughs> than on the inside. <laughs> All right, so, so this is great. We the, First, I think we got somewhere towards solving the debt limit. Next time, we'll work towards the college dating issue that you brought up, and we'll try yeah, to yeah, help absolutely. them with their dating I'm practices. Do that to you guys. You know? yeah. I don't know about that. Listen, thank you so much. We, we love chatting with you. You're so knowledgeable, and, and just thank you for everything you've done for this country, everything you continue to do, and uh, we look forward to chatting next time. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll Take see care. you.